What's up my fellow scruffy looking nerf herders and welcome to the Carbonite Chat. Today I'm talking about Star Wars Rebels Season 4, Episode 10 and 11. Was it 10 11? 9 and, yeah, 10, 11. <laughs> 10 and 11. Uh, just finished watching it, so this is just kind of a quick comment, review, thoughts on the episodes. Um, overall, I, I really liked it. Um, I, I wasn't surprised by spoiler alerts, by the way. I was not surprised that Kanan died. Um, it was kind of expected. Uh, the whole bringing up of Doom, his last name, Caleb Doom, uh, kind of made sense. I think the title of the episode was Doom, so that hinted at it as well. Um, we had Saul. There was a much larger wolf, and it had blue eyes. He had green eyes, I believe, before. And so then right as his eyes turned blue, I was like, yep, he's going to become the wolf. So that, of course, happened, which I find interesting. It fits back with prior uh, last season or the fourth um, first half of this season. They talked a lot about that Kanan was discussing with Hera how they constantly get brought back to La Fall and like that there was some kind of connection there. And she was just like, you know, Ezra was here. And he was like, no, but we were brought here before that. And, you know, there was something kind of connecting them. And then we saw that the wolves really connected with him as well. And so it seems to be some kind of connection with him. Um, there was an article by Dave Filoni on the importance of the Lothwolves. Um, Lothwolves. I need to read that again, look at it. Um, I, you know, it was more like a vision when Ezra saw it. So I wonder if. Is he actually turned into a loth wolf, or is it more, you know, a, a vision that just Ezra sees and may continue to see? Um, I've never, I haven't been that big a fan of Kanan, uh, but the the death scene was done very well, um, and particularly the after the fact one him saving them. It was very reminiscent if you've read the New Dawn books where um, it talks about where it's it's going through his past and how he met Hera and they're on the planet of Gorse and uh, somebody tried to blow up the mines and he came in there and he always tries to hide that he had Jedi powers because he was always afraid you know, that he would be noticed. And so, but he was trying to rescue some people and the mine was beginning to collapse and he ended up stopping everything from falling it was one of those where it was like you know kind of like what a lot of people use for the the leia thing for why she was be able to use her force powers uh, like that was it was like rescuing or saving someone that kind of gives you that adrenaline rush that you know allows us to do more than we normally could do uh is why he was able to hold all of that off and then shove Hera away it reminded me of ahsoka what she did with uh ezra in the season finale of season two, Twilight of the Empress, um, where, you know, he was trying to come back and help and she shoved him off. Uh, it reminded me of that. I'm wondering if with the moment where they have, they show the little thing that the Caleb Doom, the Loth Wolf brings, it had two it had three hands it had one hand just up and then it had one hand that was like this and then one hand that was out like this i'm wondering if that's not connected with the mortis characters we we saw in the trailers that we'll see them uh the hand up if the 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 father his whole thing was to uh control and hold off the mainly the son but the son and the daughter from being able to be free on the galaxy he had to control them and that's why he wanted Anakin to come because Anakin being the chosen one would be able to control them and he was able to uh, he just chose not to uh, take over for the father and then the the son was kind of the dark side and was obviously always wanting to fight and attack and so the, the fist up could kind of represent that possibly and then the hand out, like uh, the daughter was willing to die and give her life uh, to be able to resurrect Ahsoka. And so just the, the, the light side of giving, I, I wonder if that's not kind of 
where they're going to go with that. And because when Ezra went into the temple before, he saw the kind of spinning. I don't even know how to explain it, but he saw the spinning stuff that it was like the script that was on the wall, but it was now moving around him. And that's what it looked like when in the trailers when it revealed the Mortis characters. Uh, that was it was just a mural or a painting. But uh, I wonder if that's not going to be that moment or that that's what this is leading to. Uh, I've got to say, I, I think it's going to bite them in the butt not killing Rook. Um, why would you not kill him there? Like you said, that's not what was, that's not what we do, but that is what you do. Like, that's exactly what you do. Like, if you're trying to pay him back, Kanan's dead. You kill Rook. It's the assassin. The guy is very dangerous, very talented. I know I'm glad because I like the character. I want to see the character continue, but I think he's going to end up killing Zeb. Um, that seems like what's going to happen. Uh, and then Sabine's going to have to deal with the fact that she stopped Zeb from killing him. And then Zeb ended up, ends up getting killed by him. I think that's going to be what happens. Uh, I don't see Sabine dying. Uh, I mean, I want to say I don't see Ezra dying, but like he's he's kind of got to die. Because um, there's no Jedis. Hera's going to live, obviously. Um, I'm getting into t too much future talk. Um, I just I love those ships, those uh, Imperial patrols. Um, those are awesome. Uh, I've, those are just some of the coolest looking ships in my mind. And obviously using the Death Trooper some is really cool. Talking about uh, Krennic combining a lot of the stuff with Rogue One. They mentioned a Stardust coming in. Um, Thrawn going to see the uh, Emperor. At first, when I thought they when they brought Thrawn in, I was nervous because I was like, Thrawn's going to have to lose. But Dave Filoni has talked about it. Like, you know, they said that Scarif's the first victory the the rebels had. So, which was sneaky how he did this one, where they technically lost, but then they accomplished it. <laughs> well done, Dave Filoni, to be able to pull that one off. Um. He said, don't expect a happy ending with all of this, which for me, I prefer that. I, I'm, uh, that's just me. I prefer the unhappy-ish stuff. It's more surprising than always having the happy ending. Uh, I'm sure I'm in the minority there. But um, thinking about that and thinking that, you know, Thrawn about to get, you know, probably get Governor Price in trouble for what she did, uh, him losing out on what, he was trying to create with the tie defender elite i wonder um you know I, i'm actually excited to see that possibly he could um he could be the one that begins to uh he could actually defeat the rebels and it just kind of adds to his mystique of uh, and greatness i think it should because i don't think this group of rebels should be able to defeat thrawn i just I, you know thrawn's too smart i mean you know as a group, they work well together, so it's okay that they get away occasionally. But overall, Thrawn's just, you know, he's like Sherlock Holmes. He just figures everything out. Um, so I hope that's where they're they're headed. Um, but I, I, I like the setup of where we're at. Um, a little bit surprised that he went ahead and killed off Kanan so quickly, but you see that they're going to work in the, the wolves with it. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the Rebellion plays along with this uh whether they're going to be willing to come in and help or not they haven't seemed willing to help and then they kind of accomplished the task that they were wanting to accomplish so what's going to happen from this point on i feel like it's going to be more of a spiritual journey with the characters and accepting Kanan's death and finding the will to continue to move forward from this point um more so than attacks i believe i read an article from filoni that said that the ending isn't going to be this huge all-out war kind of battle and that would make sense that it, it's more of a spiritual thing that they go on and uh, you see that beginning to happen um which is cool again like i've never been too connected with these characters but the the canaan death and the reaction from hera um the reaction where you had ezra and zeb hugging it, it just it was very uh sen sentimental it, it almost got to me a little bit and then the the moment with Hera talking about Kanan you know bringing her the gift and 
you know, the fact that she waited so long to say I love you, all of that, it really, it hit a chord very well. It was done very well. And um, then her adding, you know, his, something for him to be a part of her family. Um, I liked all of that. I thought that was really, really well done. I'm sure it's going to continue on from this point to see how they kind of grow from being able to move past or get over the struggle of losing Canaan. Um, outside of this, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, obviously that's the, the main gist of this, these episodes is Canaan's death and what happens from that point. Um, all the other stuff, you know, maybe I'll have to rewatch and think about it, but you know, this kind of gets the gist of what, uh, what happened. Uh, I look forward to hearing your thoughts down below on all of this with Kanan and uh, some of the stuff I talked about with Mortis and uh, you know what you see going forward from here um, I obviously need to do <laughs> a little more thinking but I wanted to put this out uh, I'll probably do a Life of Kanan video and just kind of go through all his whole life kind of as like a rest in peace kind of video tribute to him um I'll try to get that out as soon as possible and um also because i've been talking about how cool those ships are i'll have a uh, probably sorry i have a board <laughs> with my schedule for videos right there um probably say wednesday i'll have a video out on uh, all of the weapon or all the vehicles in rebels that's kind of going on and it'll be detailing that one that i really enjoy and uh outside of that that's about it i look forward to hearing all your thoughts and feelings on it and uh look forward to seeing what's going on next of course it didn't really show any really any trailers for what's happening next they just kind of repeated the mid-season which is unfortunate usually tuesday or wednesday they put out a trailer for the next uh week so be ready to see what might happen with that but uh I've run on it long enough and uh, I look forward to hearing all of your thoughts and opinions and feelings on it as well and see what y'all say. Uh, I'll post some videos up right here and um, that'll be pretty much it guys. Thank you again or as always for watching and never forget you nerf herders. I love you.